Hey folks, welcome back to the Good Life Outdoors. Really excited. We got drawn for the Texas Parks and Wildlife Hunt at the Rita Blanca National Grasslands for pronghorn antelope. Never hunted pronghorn before. It's been one of my bucket list animals and I'm really excited about it. About 9,000 people uh, put in for the draw this year and only 12 people were chosen. So I'm heading up to Central Texas to pick up my dad and tomorrow morning meeting up with uh, a good friend of ours and the three of us are going to be driving up there. It's going to be a nine hour drive from Central Texas all the way up to the very tip top of the panhandle to go hunt for Prognor. So none of us have done this before. We know that they're wary animals. We know that they uh, can see a whole long way. So we're going to get up there and see what we can do. So hope you'll follow along. It should be a fun video. The Parks and Wildlife have, have been posting the results of this hunt the past several years. It's been almost 100% success rate uh, each year, and I'm hoping that we can uh, help keep that up. So stick around and we'll get started. Okay, spoiler alert. As you may have noticed from the thumbnail for this video, we were pretty successful. And I want to show you how we did all that. Um, and at the end, I want to give you some advice of, uh, if you happen to get drawn for hunting pronghorn at the National Grasslands, how you might be more successful from what we learned. So stick around to the end of the video for that advice. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to that channel and hit the like button. Thanks a lot. Oh my goodness, hey folks. I just shot a big old antelope. First time out here, first morning. Oh my gosh, I'm shaking. <laughs> Sorry I didn't get any of that on film, but man, we, uh, we saw one last night while we were scouting. Went back to where we thought they should be. Uh, we had one guy drive around on the main road, saw him. And I crawled on my hands and knees, probably about 150 yards to get close. And he came in close and I put the whammy on him. Oh, we're going to go look at him in just a little bit. But oh my goodness, I don't have any of my camera gear. This is recorded on my phone. And uh, I'm, I know I'm all disheveled right now because I've been crawling. But oh my goodness, there is a big old antelope down. First one, there's three of us hunting. And uh, whew, oh, that feels good. Oh, I can't believe that just happened. And I am, oh, I'm thankful. He's down, he dropped where I shot him. I have no reason to believe he won't stay there. So we're gonna go look at him here in a little bit. So stay tuned. Well, there we go. That was a nice, nice antelope. And uh, I'm really, really, really pleased with that. Um, here we are, not even uh, two hours into the hunt. And one of our three, me, has already gotten one. So that's pretty cool. So we're gonna go, now that we kind of have a strategy in place as it were, we'll uh, keep going after it. See if we can get the other two guys, their antelope. We've got plenty of hunt time left, so we'll see what happens. So here we go. Okay, here we are. Before noon on the first day of the hunt, we have a second antelope on the ground. My dad was able to shoot one. When I was skinning a quarter in my antelope, they went to go check out another area where we had seen a buck while we were scouting yesterday. And uh, sure enough, he was bedded down 
my dad was able to put the sneak on him and uh, it's a nice animal. He shot him, went down and uh, they already have him gutted out. I was over doing my thing. So by the time I got here, they've, uh, they've kind of processed him, but he's a good looking animal and really exciting that we have two down uh, this close in to the beginning of the hunt. So we're two for three. Our third guy needs to go get one. We're gonna go get him on one right now. brought along this tailgate extender for the truck uh, with the thoughts that we might be able to use this to keep the animals off the ground while we're skinning and quartering them. Worked out really, really well. Really glad to have it along. It was really easy to pack with us. So if you have one, I would recommend bringing it with you. It's day two of the hunt. Our third guy still hasn't got his antelope. We made a big long stalk on one yesterday, but they just kept moving further and further out as uh, as they were going towards him with the decoy. So today he's set up to just kind of sit and wait and see if we can have some come by in an area that we've seen them. And my dad and I are gonna go drive around and scout and uh, just kind of enjoy this area out here. It's beautiful out here, all sorts of wildlife. So see what happens we're just gonna wait on his text and hopefully he'll uh, let us know we got one here more sooner than later so we'll see what happens Well, here it is at the end of day two, waiting on our buddy, hoping he can see an antelope uh, before the end of shooting time. And uh, there's a whole group of antelope about 1,200 yards away, the wrong direction from him. But uh, yeah, they're, uh, they're around. We just need to have him uh, be able to get a shot on one. Um, he's had a couple of near, near opportunities, but uh, nothing to shoot at as of yet. But it's still a hell of a lot of fun out here and we were having a good time and lots to see. So we're going to try it again tomorrow morning. I'll take care. All right, shot fired. Looks like we have our last of the three antelope down. Um, I'm gonna go check it out and see what he's got, but he stood up with a little victory salute. So uh, yeah, I think we've got one down. We're gonna go check it out right now. And there we go. Great hunt for our first time at the Rita Blanca National Grasslands for pronghorn. 26 years my dad's been putting us in for this hunt. We finally got drawn. Three hunters, three tags, all of them filled with really nice bucks and had a great time doing it. So appreciate you following along. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give me a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos, subscribe to the channel. If you do subscribe, hit that notification button so you know when I post new videos. I appreciate each and every one of you following along. Y'all get out there and live the good life.
Thanks a lot. Well, I hope you enjoyed following along on this hunt. We had a blast while we were doing this and we learned a lot along the way. And as I said at the beginning of the video, we wanted to impart some of the learnings we had along this hunt to you. So I'm going to give you five things that help us be successful on this hunt and hopefully it'll help you if you get drawn for the same one. So number one is to get a good map. You're looking at 71,000 acres of grassland. There's a lot of fences and there's a lot of private land mixed around in there and you want to make sure you're hunting the right spot. We used Onyx which we were able to put on our phone and use the GPS feature to show exactly where we were as we were going. And it showed us exactly where those private lands were and the lands we should be hunting on the national grasslands were. Came in really handy and I wouldn't recommend doing that without the uh, a map. Uh, you could also get the paper maps, uh, I believe, through the Forest Service for the Rita Blanca grasslands. Number two, drive around and scout. We got up there the afternoon before our hunt, and so we were able to have a couple of hours before it got dark just to start driving around and see what we saw. And there were a few areas where we did see some pronghorn. And the next day we came back, and case in point, my pronghorn first thing in the morning, that first day of the hunt, and my dad's before noon the first day of the hunt were both bucks we had seen the night before we were scouting around. So. Make the assumption that if you see them one day, most likely they'll be back there the next. Number three, before your hunt, start practicing shooting at long range. You have immense vast spaces out here. And so while you wanna make a good ethical shot, you may not get, get within three or 400 yards of these animals. So you wanna be really confident shooting at long distance. Now, full disclosure, none of our shots were that long. My shot was 98 yards, my dad was just under 200, and our third hunters was, I think, believe 89 yards. So these things did come in close, but a lot of the ones we saw were at 1,200 yards, 2,000 yards, and that's a long way to sneak up on an animal who can see a long way. So get comfortable before your hunt practicing at long distances. So number four is to always assume there's something over the next rise. While this landscape looks pretty flat at first, as you're driving around, you'll notice a lot of little hills and valleys that you can't see over. And as you're driving around, there may be an animal right on the other side. It may not be in rifle range, but it may be something you may be able to put a sneak on. So what we learned is as we're coming up to something we can't see over, we'd stop the vehicle and kind of silently creep up to the top of the hill and see if there's something over on the other side. And in fact, that's how our third hunter got his buck. Uh, we had seen some pronghorn go over this rise earlier in the day, so he decided he wanted to go look. So we drove right up to the base of this little hill and he crawled up there. Now it didn't go up and over, it went up and stayed flat, but he was able to find a buck that was bedded not too far away and ended up shooting it. So it worked out really well. So always assume there's something over the next rise. Number five, and this one's kind of interesting, pronghorn for as wary as they are and for as far as they can see, they're curious animals. They're not used to things that are out of their element. And so you may want to try, if you can get the sneak on them, using some sort of distraction, using a flag. Uh, our third hunter, when he got up and found his pronghorn, it was bedded down facing away from him. It got up and started walking and he pulled a white uh, set of paper towels out of his pocket and started waving them up and down. That pronghorn walked from 400 yards to less than 100 yards and he was able to take that, that animal. So it's something to kind of keep in mind that if they see something that doesn't look dangerous to them, they may come in a little closer. So I hope that helps. That's five different things we learned while we were out there and it helped us be successful and I hope this helps you to be successful as well. So best of luck to you as you put in for the draw hunts or finding other places to hunt these animals because it's a heck of a lot of fun.